We're now midway in the eighth end with Kylo of the Territories making a nose hit on that guard out in front, leaving it there and giving uh, Mert Thompson and company without last rock in this eighth end something potentially to work with now. And there's Thompson indicating, let's start by going into the house here, not too deep, preferably around the 12 foot, and see what we might build here in end number eight. Well, Bill McTavish first, first rock, played the in turn and uh, put the guard about uh, two and a half, three feet over the hog line. So he should know his draw weight out here. It's just a question of getting around that guard and into the rings. They jumped on it right away. They're really working on it. Mert wouldn't be too unhappy if that rock even stopped short, but they want to get it by that guard. He doesn't want to split it off. Well, he's got good line. Is he by? Is he by? Just by. Oh, yes, he may be off to close to where Thompson had indicated the 12-foot ring of the front as they get off it now. It'll be a little deeper than that. It'll come up into the eighth, and it's under cover. Long shot. Well, you see, they stopped sweeping and running once it hit the 12-foot because it was starting to come out the other side, on the outturn side. And that's a nice draw shot by McTavish. Now, Alexander has to go back and try to undo the damage uh, initiated by Scott Kylo with that nose hit, leaving the guard on in front. He's got to try to clean that out of there if they can. With his third, Brad Robertson. Again, not very much ice being given to Robertson. Wants to uh, corner it out, roll the shooter away. It's an awfully long way to go to try to make the long raise double takeout, but he's going to have a look at it back here as the line shapes up on this one, but he appears to be on the outside of the rock and simply will split them off. Both out of play. However, Thompson has the advantage now of being able to play stones here in this uh, eighth end. As Alexander steps in behind his opposite number, Tom set for Manitoba, which is a good idea. Take a look at the ice the other team is playing as well over their shoulder. You know what's happening in virtually every rock. It can change, it can do funny things out there, and a well, skipper better be aware of it. Exactly right, and it depends how the thrower of the rock releases it, whether he throws it out to the broom, because if he throws it out to the broom, it, what we call an inside-out shooter, that rock will take a long time to curl. Of course, McTavish here just throwing that one prior to that should have an idea as to the weight and the ice. He's still a long way out there. The rock has got to do some curling. They should maybe start working on it a bit to bring it over. They really curl a lot now with a nice quiet weight that the cabbage has thrown. Coming down nicely. I think this is going to provide a guard for him who comes a few more feet just over toward that center line. The only danger there it is. in trying to protect that rock, they really brought that rock in a little bit too far, maybe about a foot, foot and a half too far. But if they didn't do that, it wouldn't have been covered. So he had to bring it down. He had to bring it down. And now, of course, the rocks being very close together allows uh, Robertson maybe a chance for a double here. But he's got to be very careful. You know, he could hit it maybe straight back, and now the Thompson would have a guard and one in the rings and a chance to draw around again. So he's got to make sure that he peels that front one off and hopefully make contact with that back one. And I would expect that young Robertson will be up with the weight on this one. That nice looking line. He's going to be very close to the double. He may hit it too much on the inside. He has. Close to it, but not enough. Just squeezes it by and rolls over to leave the shooter on the left side. It's amazing how much those rocks can move, even with good weight the last few feet. That's what happened there. Well, it appears once they hit the center line, they really start to curl. This is uh, probably one of the most difficult shots in curling and putting on a perfect guard. Because the rock does most of its curling at the end. And if he's got light weight, the rock pu might pull too much and not offer him any protection. But this is a very difficult shot. Well, that and the freeze, I guess, are two of the most difficult in the game. So it is guard time again for Manitoba's Mert Thompson. He's curled very, very well. Been up in the 70% range throughout this game. It looks like Mert has lots of weight. He's still well out there. Got a bit more weight than McTavish would appear, but they're staying right off it. It may dig in. I think he'll be down awfully close to his own shot rock. Yes, he is. He's going to be right in the ring, side by side, maybe. Just yep. ahead of it. But still, indefinite double range, if that's the route that Alexander wants to go, and he indicates he will. Well, not only in double range, but if Alexander hit this just a little bit on the inside, he could make the double and roll behind that corner guard. But once again, another half shot. 
uh, by Thompson. You know, if he gets that guard on, he's got pretty well control of this end. But coming into the house and putting them fairly close together, the advantage could swing to Alexander on this very takeout here. Robertson with just one to two inches of ice for him. He does want to hit it on the inside, cross over the face of that rock. Try to roll in behind if he can get the double. He was nicely on the broom, maybe a little bit on the outside. The rock is starting to curl now. Oh, it's, got to, it's changing turns. It has changed turns. He'll get just one, and that's all. That rock, even with that weight, across the hog line, changed turns. You know, it looked like he had a perfect double coming up, and the rock handle just straightened up and then turned the other way to the out turn. It's amazing, even with that weight, a rock, you know, I can see a draw shot at happening, see. but we'll watch for it to happen along here. Look at he's got lots of curl here. Then just about coming to the hog line, you'll see it just straighten up right, right here. Did, and then it turned the other way. And now you'll see the rock take the out turn curl to it. Bad break for the territories team. Thompson making sure this one's totally clean so that uh, nothing can uh, interfere with it. I just picked up something and changed even with that weight. I would think Thompson here is maybe just playing about the same way, hoping his guy sweep it all the way down and tap his one that's in the top of the eight foot right back on the button. Watching it very, very closely. He's got nice weight. He's going to be into the rings. He sure will. He's not they should bring it front. now and split them. That's what he might be able to do. Moves it across and sits there with two. Well, the double is still there for Alexander. But uh, it's a different double certainly now with his last rock coming up. And the chance of him blanking this end is uh, virtually out of the question. That's what he had hoped to do if he can blank this one. The next one, take last rock down to the 10th and a 2-2 tie. Well, the trouble for Alexander here that if he hits that first rock right in the center line on in front of the fort, but if he hits it on the nose, he is not going to be shot rock. He's going to have to hit that rock on the outside to get a little bit of roll and maybe make the double to get his one point. But if he hits it too thick, he could roll right across the face of it and leave Tom Set a steal of one. He doesn't dare just play the one, that is the shot rock, because, uh, well, the second shot rock, because he might roll out of play. And leave his opponent one. So a big shot for Alexander here. Well, he's throwing big weight at it. They're really working on it. He is not going to make the double, I'll tell you that. He's going to hit this one right on the nose or on the other side. It will be on the other side and do him no good whatsoever as he rolls away and leaves. Manitoba to steal a point. Second time they have done so in this final game today. Manitoba taking a one-point lead after eight complete ends now at 3-2 on the steal. He missed by Alexander getting and rolling out with his final rock on end eight. So 3-2 Manitoba, eighth end over. We'll be back to St. John, New Brunswick in just a moment. There's one thing you forgot to tell us. For years, we've been telling folks that Nabisco shredded wheat is 100% whole wheat. The one thing you forgot to tell us. And that you get the goodness of all the wheat, including the wholesome bran. You still forgot one thing. Ah, yes. Come on, tell us. Nabisco shredded wheat is unsweetened. Completely unsweetened. We knew it all along. When do you need Sid Silver? On occasions such as weddings, black tie dinners, white tie formals, dinner dances, bar mitzvahs, awards dinners, holiday cruises, the graduation ball, the queen's plate. No matter what the occasion, for perfectly styled, superbly fitted formal wear, come to Sid Silver Formals, 500 Young Street, just above college. We'll look after you. Excuse me, what did you have for dinner? Underdone chicken and an overdrawn bank account. And then? Indigestion. Indigestion? Pepto-Bismol. And what did you have for dinner? A little of this, a little of that, and a lot of in-laws. And then? Indigestion. Another day, another dog. Cut now. I'm moving out of here Cutting up some good times I'm really glad I'm here 
Canada's great taste in ale. What a beer to share. Me and the boys in our fifty. Me and the boys in our beer. Play to rock here in the ninth inning with Manitoba leading the territories 3-2 in the final for the Canadian Junior Men's Curling Championship, the Riverside Country Club in St. John, New Brunswick this afternoon. And this one, as Don Dugan indicated a few ends ago, may very well go right down to a last rock finish in the 10th inning. That's the kind of game it has been. Nothing in play right now as the Manitoba lead, Mike Friesen, will play his second shot. This is a very critical end for Mert Thompson as well as uh, Alexander. But if Thompson uh, scores one, Alexander's uh, in a lot of trouble. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Alexander in this particular end just played wide open, uh, hope to blank the end, and maybe have Last Rock coming home and try to get his two points that way. He's cut a little bit deep. He is out of the rings, back well over four foot. Larry Phillips, who. Uh, the skip of the Quebec team involved in that three-way playoff for the right to meet the territories has joined us now. In fact, he'll be going on to join uh, his team of last year as lead in Begev, France in the uh, upcoming World Junior Curling Championship as we look at Randall now. Uh, see his shot. Larry, uh, you had quite a week here. It's some very intense competition. You almost got to this final. Yeah, well, we had a bad break against Manitoba in the tiebreaker. We were three up coming home and he had last rock and a couple of nose hits really hurt us. He took three and he stole the extra end. Competition was very strong. The guys are all really nice. Everyone gets along. It was a pleasure playing. It's quite a battle today we're looking at. This one, uh, as we said a moment ago, may go right down to the final rock of the last end. It should go down. But the, the only way that Trevor will be able to beat Manitoba is to come around those guards because they'll keep just putting them up. And uh, that's... In the round robin, we were beating Manitoba by six points. We started to play takeout, and we almost lost to them. And yesterday, we're leading 7-4 coming home, and we started playing takeout, and we lost to them. So the only way you can beat them is just play draw and try and steal every end. Well, as Doogie said, that's what they've been trying to do, but they're not making the shots. They're just rubbing rocks and not quite getting around the way they'd like. Yeah. I have a question for Larry. Larry, uh, you skipped here in the uh, Canadian Championships, and now you're going uh, over to Mejia, France, for the World Championship to pay, play lead. Uh, that's got to be quite a transition from skip to lead. Yeah, it's uh, a lot different. Like, when I was playing Manitoba, I know they had already won, and I was really nervous. Even, mo even uh, I was as nervous as the final last year mm -hmm. when, uh, against John Kawaja. Here's Dot Kylo's rock now coming down, attempting the uh, takeout on the Manitoba stone, and that is really curling over now. In fact, I'm not sure he's going to get this. He will not. He's going to miss it. Uh, Larry, uh, I know you want to get away and uh, relax and watch the rest of this game. I'm just wondering about the fact that you have last year's team out of the system we have in Canada going to the World Championship a year later. Now, you've been playing with this team. How much time have you had to practice with the others, and how much of a unit do you think you will be by the time you hit France? Well, we've been practicing a lot. We all quit school to go to the World. In the morning, we go to jog a couple of miles in the morning, and we do a uh, physical training. And uh, just before the Nationals in the afternoon, I practice with uh, my team that were over here. And at night, I practice with Denis Marchand. So uh, I'm practicing a lot of curling lately. And, uh, well, we're really ready for the world. We're really up. And, uh, we won't be able to say we didn't give it our best shot. Good luck to you there, Larry, and your teammates. And we'll be joining you, of course, to uh, bring it to viewers across the country on CBC television from the in about three weeks' time. So good luck. Thank you. Larry Phillips. Now, here is uh, Manitoba again, uh, pouncing on mistake after mistake. Uh, this territory's team in the late going, trying to avoid a mistake of their own by not getting this one onto the rings. And if they don't, well, that'll open the door once again for uh, the territory. That's been the situation throughout the game. Each team try to get the jump. This time, it's just on the ring. So they are indeed lying two here. Well, Mert Thompson has really gone offensive here. What he's saying, in effect, is, Alexander, I'm going to give you your point this uh, end, and we're going to be tight coming home. I'm going to have the advantage of last rock, and I'm going to beat you with the last rock. As a result, he put the rock over in the corner as opposed to playing a guard and maybe being two up coming home. So this is kind of a pressure, uh, pressure situation for Alexander. He uh, cannot afford to roll out. He liked to hit and stay. Uh, maybe hoping that uh, Tom Seth uh, would roll out and he'd get out of this end by blanking it. Here is Scott Kylo again as they wait for this rock to cross over the center line. Now it makes his move and he is going to hit it just about on the nose and stay right there for shot. We 
We're now midway in the ninth end of the Manitoba Territories battle for the Canadian Junior Curling Championship. Manitoba on top by one point, three to two. Last rock belongs to the territories here in end number nine. That red territories rock is Shock Rock. The second Yellowstone is definitely on the ring. The biter is second shot on the left. And to keep the pressure up, uh, the Manitoba team is going to have to make all their hits and uh, hang around and force uh, the territories to take a point to have advantage of that last rock going home. Tavish doing a little bit of house cleaning there, looking at his rock. Maybe felt there was something underneath it. He's been struggling throughout the early end of this game, but has come back to make some big shots for Manitoba the last end or so. And he needs one here. He cannot afford to roll out. He's throwing nice weight, nice carrying weight. The rock is starting to move for him, though. He doesn't want to roll to the left. He'd just as soon hit it right on the nose or to the right. Well, he'd be a little bit to the right, move towards center, and stay right there for shot rock. So Manitoba again, line two, without last rock, remember, in this ninth end. Mark Olson is the coach of the uh, Manitoba team, skipped by Mert Thompson. Mark, I guess you've got to be a, a little nervous right now. This has been quite a battle between these two. They aren't giving up much. Yeah, I missed the first game. I was away in Manitoba, and I came here, and uh, I heard they'd beat us. And I've always heard of uh, territory rinks of being kind of weak, and then I take a look at this team, and I tell you, there couldn't be a stronger team here. They have surprised people in the briar, too, the territories. And, of course, it's only been the last four or five years they've been competing in these national championships without having to qualify for Alberta or B.C. That's right. Uh, Mark, I, as you know, uh, we were in Verdon together when this whole thing started for Mark Thompson. Uh, he lost a game there. As a matter of fact, prior to that, he struggled just to get in a playoff to uh, get to the uh, Manitoba playdowns. He struggled in the Manitoba playdowns. He came out here. He lost four games. He was in a special playoff. But he seems to thrive on that. Like, he's a real competitor, a real clutch curler. I would say, if I wanted to say what they were, I'd say they're scramblers. There's no, they, you, they've made it every game through, you know, they've been real tight ones, extra ends, uh, last rock steals, and we had last rock some ends, and he's really fought to really get his work where he is now, and he's been to the world before, and the, the, the thrill or the want to get back to the world again is very great for all these guys, including Billy, which has never been there before. So the experience really pays off for him. Like, uh, you can tell that he's been around curling a lot. I know that he's played against all the top uh, teams in Western Canada. You can tell that he loses confidence and experience. Definitely. He's won games uh, just on confidence this year, and uh, you know, all the experience he has is very evident today and, uh, I mean, this morning's game, and uh, I hope it shows up in this game also. Here is McTavish now. After you saw Robertson a moment ago, we've been listening to Mark Olson, the coach of the Manitoba team. Uh, just get that rock off the ring. So Manitoba lying one and trying to replace it now with McTavish's draw for two. And uh, this one sliding down quite comfortably down that right side. And the super keen ice will be up there in the 12 foot. That other one on the left is biting. So Manitoba once again lies two. A very clutch shot by McTavish. Boy, anytime that you have to split the house uh, when you're only one up, you have to put pressure on the other team. That's a great draw by McTavish. So the pressure building rock by rock here, and the uh, mistakes less and less affordable on either team with a one-point differential. Manitoba on top by 3-2 in the ninth end. But right now, Alexander having to play defensively with Mark. last rock going for him in the ninth end, looking at two. Uh, Mark, do you feel that uh, the Manitoba team uh, plays a better game uh, coming around or a wide-open type of game? Are they adaptable at both games, or do they excel at one? I'd agree they'd be adaptable to both games. Um, they, they have been playing garbage the first five or six games, and they had gotten some themselves into some trouble, but they had got some big ends off it also. So really, they can play either game, and uh, they, they play both games fairly well, and it's, it's, I think it's a matter of confidence and the experience which they have. So, just, so you uh, feel that they can play either type of game, yeah, whether it be take it or, uh, or the come around game? Yeah, definitely. All right, here is an attempt now by Thompson to get that shot rock out of there, just put down by the territories. And the 12-foot ring on the right. He'll uh, go via the outturn route. Remember, it uh, runs pretty straight there. In fact, can back up on certain occasions, depending on the weight thrown. Well, once again, it uh, all depends on the release of the rock. If you're an inside-out thrower and throw it out to that broom, it's liable to hang for a long, long time. He's got a lot of house to roll to, boy. They're really going to have to work on this one. He's well out there. He's got good to finally snap right there. He'll ease it over and just fire the other one. The shooter rolling way back, and it is going to not. Well, it might survive. I don't know. It, uh, that is very close to being on the back. Could be. They'll all have a look at this one. That's an important shot if it is on the ring. Well, let's have a look. 
can't, can't really tell from there. Yeah, from this angle, it looks like it's out, but you really have to look over top of the rock to, de to really determine whether it's in or not. Yeah, that's uh, ice showing that white in between from that angle is not indicative of where it might be, but uh, I think if Alexander is wise, he almost has to assume it is on, unless he is positive it isn't. Oh, that is very, be. very close. It looks to me like that rock could be on. Could be there. And just judging by the shot that he is calling here, that I think it is on, because he's calling for a draw around that one that's just on the top of the 12 foot. So that's an indication uh, that that rock at the back is on. That was a big break for Manitoba. It just grazed the other one, which was out of uh, off the rings, not out of play, the red one there, and survived on that basis, perhaps. Although but there's the top shot, which would indicate it isn't on. So it is very, they take very a measurement close. to decide. Well, they're really undecided. They're having a look now, maybe at running the double or coming off that red one. That's, I think, what he is going to do. Well, this is a strange, strange call, yeah. you know, because if it's on, I would play that front yellow one. I hope to maybe to make the double. It's a little riskier shot, but... Well, I think he is trying to play it off the front one, isn't he? No, no he's trying to go by. squeeze by. He's going to wind up making contact with the front rock anyway, but not keeping his shooter around. Well, I'll tell you, it depends. If Mert draws to the other side, you can be assured that that rock is on. But if he goes down into those two at the back, you can be assured that it's on. You can be assured he thinks it's on, or he's pretty certain it's on. Yeah. That's always tough, uh, Mark Olson, to really decide what to do if you're not absolutely certain. And sometimes uh, the eyes can play tricks on you out there with the rock being on or off. Uh, definitely. This is a game of inches, and uh, you look down at it, and you might say it's in, and then they put the measuring stick on, and you play the whole end on one rock, yeah. and it might be out. Could have sworn it's in, and it wasn't. Uh, okay, Coach, if it's on, where do you go? Other side, right? Or the other side. If it's See, off, what do you do? If it's off, I think I'd come down to the pile there and use it as backing that for the next right. race. Well, Alexander now to 73%. He was lagging behind 8 or 10 points behind Tom Set, but it's pulled up nicely in the final uh, couple of ends, although we'd like to have that last shot back. He didn't do all that much for him. Tom Set now at 69%. They reversed roles at the stage. At one point in this game, Tom Set was outcurling Alexander, and now it's uh, just turned around slightly. McTavish holding the broom for Tomset right here. He's and going he to the out turn, so that, that rock might not be on. He's yeah. going down to the cluster. He's going to get out of that pile or create a bigger pile if he can as McTavish now. As that rock looks to be a little sluggish, comes out to help out with the sweeping. They want it up tight. Look at that rock is straightening up right at the top of the house. Yeah, it did. Stays out there. Well, that's got to be the back one may not be on. And uh, it may or may not come into play for a measure, which time uh, only then would we know. Well, there's another angle, the overhead camera. Let you be the judge as to whether it's on or off. But the preoccupation now is with a rock that definitely is on, the 12 foot. The shot rock at the moment, owned by Manitoba. Interesting call here. Alexander now going to the out turn, as opposed to the in turn that he threw the first time. He has to be very careful here. If he hits us a little bit on the outside, he's going to drive it on those two at the back. Now, that angle indicates it could be on. Well, you see the striking edge of the rock is a little bit fatter, and if you look right over top of it, that just has to touch fractionally. Mm -hmm. Down by 3-2. Trevor Alexander with his yeah. final rock at his ninth end, and they jump out of way as he screams on the sweeper to get going. Well, he's well on the outside of it still. He's going to drive it on those back ones. We will never know if that indeed was on. Well, well, look at the action out of the these outer rings rocks. to see who hangs on. And it is the territories just hanging on for shot as those two rocks went out to the right side like a foot race. Peculiar shot. The other one surviving on the backing on the left side as it came down. Look, you'll see he hits it on the outside here, but watch the action on the top set rock. He hits a foot a half a rock. He comes off the red one, then actually touches that yellow one at the back. But look at the action. Look at the spinning action on that yellow one at the back. Just a fraction of an inch difference. And so the yellow still to Manitoba moved just too far to give the territories one point. And the score tied of three after nine. The last rock, the hammer in the final end, belongs to Trump's set of Manitoba.
as a blanket of snow Set your sights Get ready to go Where the good times soar and good friends are bound Catch a breeze, make a sail as you glide Blue smiles along with you Houstonoff's Law of Travel. The chance of your being delayed en route is directly proportional to the urgency of your trip. Furthermore, your reserved hotel room will probably be occupied <coughs> by someone else. Unless you have an American Express assured reservation, you'll be welcome no matter how late you arrive. Ah, oh, Mr. Ustinov. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. You know, I happened to tell my Allstate agent about how everything I have, I have two of. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. All right. Like two cars, he asked? Maybe Allstate's two-car discount can save you money on insurance. <laughs> Allstate sure saves me. I can use the money. Noah! Dinner! One wipe. Compare. Allstate's multi-car discount may save you money. You're in good hands with Allstate. And that's a promise from the good hands people. 12 in curling games, as a rule, are no longer played in national competitions, except when you go to two extra ends. And that's what's happened here between the territories in Manitoba and St. John, New Brunswick. A chance to win on the 10th for Mert Thompson, and a tough chance in the 11th end just to stay alive because uh, Trevor Alexander had buried a rock at the top of the four-foot ring. Well, Trevor got that rock in there like he was dead heavy, and it looked like he was going to be at the back of the rings, but it dug in and left Thompson with a very difficult shot. You'll see he's still well out there coming over the hog line. He hasn't come across the rock yet. It curls just in the last two and a half feet, just enough to corner it. And still them both, leaving them locked in a 3-3 tie. To 11 in, and force a second extra end here in the 12th end, the Riverside Country Club. The last rock, of course, retained by Manitoba into this 12th end to decide the national junior title. So, some big drama the last couple of ends here. Some outstanding shot making on the part of both teams. Good sound strategy in gambling and uh, some uh, tough moments for Thompson with his final shot when he could have won it quite easily with a straight takeout. Wide open one on the 11th end. And a brilliant shot you just saw to stay alive and force his 12th end. Really, Thompson's shot in the 10th end was a lot easier than the one in the 11th end. Like, that was a very tough, tough shot that he made. Of course, uh, he's going to continue here playing defensively hoping that his teammates can peel off uh, all the front guards that uh, Alexander throws up. This Gagne's shot now. Just wants to get a piece of it if he can to get it out of there. He'll move it. And just. And far enough to be out of play. The winner of this game will represent Canada in the World Junior Championship of 1982 in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And this is a game of nerves. You know, really, when you're peeling off front rocks, it is very difficult because you don't want to hit them on the nose. You're playing with a corner of the rock. Conversely, uh, the team from the territories do not want the rock in the house. They want it somewhere between the house and the hog line. And if it goes into the house, it completely changes the whole outlook on the end for Alexander. Brad Robertson, third man for the territories now. And this one's going to be in the house. Not as it's quiet as you'd like to be. And they're sweeping it to get it behind the T-line because it, they may use that rock as a last resort, maybe hopefully freezing to it. It is just back of the T-line in the four-foot circle. <laughs> Thompson to this stage, not under uh, well, half the pressure that he was in the previous couple of ends, certainly in the 11th end, when uh, he just couldn't get enough cracks at those guards to move them all out of there and wound up in a very, very tenuous situation. The way Thompson's been hitting and rolling out, he would, I'm sure, would like McTavish to hang around with this one in case that he has an open hit to play in the last rock of the game, and that might be a saver for him. This one sticks around. He did not necessarily want that right there because Alexander is not above playing that freeze game. In fact, he went through it a couple of ends ago. 
And the Pepsi Cola Trophy awaits the winner and accompanying trays, of course, of this game here this afternoon. Plus that right to go on to the World Championship a year from now, carrying Canada's colors. And it is evident that both these teams are intent on winning it. Nobody uh, giving up a thing here over the last three or four ends. Well, Alexander, with this rock here, we'll ask uh, Bradley Robinson just to put it halfway between the house and the hog line. I don't think he wants this one in. And he's hoping, of course, that uh, Tom Set will maybe drive it on that one that he has in the house or maybe hit it on the nose. He hasn't got any protection out in front of the ring, so he has to hope for a nose hit somewhere. Robinson a little quieter this time. Well, they're looking, the way they're they want to get it right down, I guess. Yes, they do. They want to get it right in tight. Well, he hasn't done a bad job, I'll tell you. He's getting it up pretty close, all right. Stopping just about three feet ahead of it. That was the plan, the way they were sweeping almost all the way down was to take it all the way to the freeze. Oh, yes, because no matter if they freeze to it, they know that uh, Tom said it's going to run it off, even if he makes the perfect freeze. Of course, the danger for McTavish here, he has to hit it on the outside. If he doesn't want to hit it on the inside, he'll just drive it straight back on his own. He yelled right away as soon as he let it go. Now they call him off it, so he must have a corner to the outside. Now it's starting to move for him. He has it nicely and leaves his own undisturbed at the back. But McTavish, he started slowly in this game and was at lowest 48% at one point. Has made some big, big shots for Manitoba over the last few in. And there was none bigger than this one because he didn't have much room for error. Good shooting by McTavish. Hits about a half a rock and drives it by his own at the side of the four foot there. So we are down to skip rocks. Two apiece in the 12th end, the second extra end underway for the Canadian Junior Men's Curling Championship. And the only hope that uh, the territory's Trevor Alexander without last rock again this end has is to try to utilize that Yellowstone of Manitoba's in some fashion, the one that's in the four-foot ring. It looks like he has plenty of weight that he will be in the house and very close to that shot rock. They're really working on it now. It'll go a long way. It's still well out there, though. It's got a lot of curling to do. Now it's starting to move. Starts to dig in as well. They want to get it as close as they possibly can. As he moves it up, he's got a pretty good-looking shot down, not far from the free, stopping just in front of it. Now the crowd here appreciating every shot. They're sitting outdoors with the curlers and indoors behind the glass in the relative comfort of the Riverside Country Club here in St. John, New Brunswick. Nobody leaving awaiting the outcome of this final between the territories and Manitoba. They've had big crowds all week long waiting to see the uh, new owners of that fine silverware on the table awaiting the winner. You see how much room Mert Thompson has between those two rocks. He is actually shot rock, and I'm sure that him and McTavish are were maybe at one time entertaining the thought of playing the guard. But it's just a little bit too risky. Yeah, I think it is. Well, if you, can, if you come and leave the guard uh, three or four feet out in front of the rings, I'm sure that uh, Alexander will just draw around it. However, hitting this and leaving it for shot off his own is risky as well. Well, especially if he hits it on the inside. You'll see that they're just a little bit staggered there. If he hits a half a rock, he's going to spill them all. See the ice? He's taking about three inches of ice. So there is certainly inherent risk in either shot. This is the one he's chosen to go with. Well, now they're starting to sweep. It looks like he has good line. It's just a question of whether the rock pulls too much, and it looks like it's going to pull. Curl a bit now, but enough to make contact and roll everything away. It is wide open. Alexander has one rock left and nowhere to hide it. That was a big shot for Thompson and the fortunes of the Manitoba team right there. Well, let me tell you something. The advantage of the ice being very keen and very fast you know, you can spill a lot of rocks. Even if they're frozen together, you could spill all three of them. You'll see here, Thompson hits about three quarters of the rock, spills the two back ones, and his shooter just rolls out the side there. You're right. Nothing there. in play. There's no place to hide. Where do you put it? Yeah, the only place he could hide it is in behind the table with the silverware, and I wouldn't win it for him. Well, he could put a hind behind the hack. Thompson couldn't hit it there. <laughs> But again, it would not be a winner. So he has to hope for a clean miss of some kind. 
And he's chosen the outturn draw. And I would think Mert Thompson and Bill McTavish will watch the running course of this rock very closely because they haven't played that many outturns down that side. And conversely, here's what Alexander Robertson has to come up with now, finding location for the shot. Where is it tricky on this ice? Where is it harder to hit than other places? That's where we have to put it. He put this one a little bit back. They haven't laid a brush to it. It should start digging in once it gets off that center line. Now it's starting to move over. Still got plenty of weight to be there unless it grabs something. He's got nice weight. He's going to be well into the eight foot. And that's what they want. They want to make Tom set go shooting for it. And he'll be right on top of the tee line. Square in the eight foot range. Well, we're down to another chance for Thompson to win this. And down for another chance uh, for an extra, another extra end, too. This kind of situation produced one before. You'll see the amount of the ice McTavish has given him. It's just about an inch, inch and a half. Again, they haven't played too many recently in this spot, so that's why Alexander chose it. He'll make him play the out turn, which I think is the turn that uh, Thompson prefers. He's got to have this one right on the money. They're keeping it clean. McTavish yelling, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's starting to come over now. He's got it a better like house to roll to. How much has he got? He's going to have to win the Canadian Championship. And look at Thompson. And Danny <laughs> McTavish. <laughs> And Friesen, happy guys, the relief of it all, the pressure finally removed after a pressure-filled afternoon and week here, battling for the Canadian Junior Men's Curling Championship. I'm sure Thompson had to be wondering with all those chances to win, as the coach moves out there now, Mark Olson, to greet them. Have I had my chances? Have I had one too many? Will I get them again? Uh, let me tell you, Mert Thompson is a competitor. And you know, uh, the, both teams, the men's uh, team from uh, the Cinnaboy Memorial, now Mert Thompson, uh, Canadian champion, he's got to be very happy because it's been a tough year for Mert. He struggled all year. He had a tough time qualifying out of the Manitoba Playdowns in a special playoff. He got back in. He lost the game in the provincial playoffs, came fighting back, and just done a credible, credible job. Has won this Canadian Junior Men's Curling Championship here in St. John, New Brunswick this afternoon. The lead, Mike Friesen, second, Joe Gagne, third, Bill McTavish, and the skip, Mert Thompson. I'm sure your hearts were in your mouths more than once over those final two or three ends. Mert, with all the chances you had to win, and one by one, you saw them go down. Oh, yeah. It was really nerve-wracking, especially on me, because I, I'm the one who missed the chance to win. And, and I figured if we lose this, oh, boy, I'll be so down. i got to come through. And, so happy that we could. Well, especially with memories of what happened to you with that uh, triple takeout by the Scottish team in Kitchener last March. I mean, you didn't, you could almost see this happening again to you, I suppose, at one point. Well, uh, I guess so, but uh, we got another shot at that uh, Uniroyal next year, so. Well, and you deserve it, too, because you played very well, and so did the uh, Territories team, but I know there was no easy final shot for you in the last few ends at all. But I would think the toughest one had to be in the 11th end when you couldn't see very much of that rock and yet you just got by it curled a lot for you and you peeled it out of there yeah that was a very tough shot uh, i wasn't exactly too sure what what kind of weight to throw there i was going to play about half weight and i upped my weight a bit and that's the reason we rolled out if i had a little less weight we would have stayed around your friend mr mctavish who was off to a bit of a slow start came back to make some big shots you really came on toward the end of the game yeah, like you say, a bit of a slow start, but thank goodness I uh, settled down a bit and came back in the second half a little bit anyway, so. Well, you could finally relax now, the pressure of this entire week behind you. I mean, there's the battle just to get into this final, never mind what you had to do to win it against the territory, so I want to congratulate you on behalf of Don Duguid for an outstanding week of curling. Well, thank you very much. And good luck. Let me be the first a year in advance. Good luck in that 82 World Junior Championship coming up. Thank you. Mark Thompson and his fine team from Manitoba winning it today in two extra ends against the team from the Territories. We'll be back to St. John, New Brunswick, right after this.